This video was sponsored by Policy Genius. Oh, hi. Welcome to another video. Uh, and this one is actually part two of a two part series. Part one, I showed you how I made these arched cabinet doors, face frame. And this part, part two, is where I show you how I build out the rest of the cabinet, drawers, all that stuff. So, follow along. If you haven't done so already, you might want to go back and watch part one. But you can watch this one and then go watch part one, however you feel like doing it. Enjoy the video. There's links in the video description to all the tools and supplies I use. There's a link to my Patreon page if you want some behind the scenes footage, backstage access, live question and answer, helpful extra tips and tricks. Go sign up on Patreon. There's a link down there. Now, let's build this. Well, I already built it, but you can, let's watch me build this. So this is where we left off in our last video. We got the face frame all done, the doors, and the drawer faces. All completo. Finito. Finished. Now we just gotta pull all the doors out of this thing and, you know, this is gonna take a long time. I'm just gonna use the force real quick. I don't know if you know, but I possess the magic force of instant joinery. Hook all these together. Zoop. All right and just carry this out in one giant piece. There, that was way easier. Now I built this cabinet backwards from the way I normally do it. Normally I build my carcass first and then build my face frame to match. But since I did the face frame first, well, I gotta use the face frame to get all my measurements for the cabinet itself. So after taking some quick measurements off of the existing face frame, I went over to the table saw and I started cutting down plywood. Now the entire outside of this cabinet is going to be made of 3 quarter inch birch ply because it's going to be painted and well birch ply is great for painting. So the first thing I did was cut down my two side panels from that 3 quarter inch birch ply. Once I had them cut to width I took them over to my chop saw and I cut them to length. They're going to be right at about 91 and a half inches for this space. Then I pulled out some white oak veneered ply. Oh, did I forget to mention that the inside of the cabinet is just going to be finished wood grain and the outside is going to be painted. So we're kind of going for a two-tone look. So although I'm using birch on the outside, I wanted a nice veneered ply for the inside since you'll see it through those glass doors. Now you might be wondering, well, how's that going to work? Because you just made your side panels and they're birch on both sides. Well, don't worry, I have a plan. The first piece of oak ply I cut down is for my middle divider shelf. It's gonna go right behind the face frame and sit right there so you'll see that oak through the door. And we'll get to the other oak innards here in a little bit. After I cut that panel down to the right width, I cut it to the right length, and then I started just chopping down some pieces of three quarter inch ply for all my bracing and support structure of the rest of the cabinet carcass. These are all gonna be just unseen cabinet components that keep it from falling apart. You'll see how these get worked in here in just a second. After cutting those to the right width, I again go over to the chop saw and I cut them all down to the right length to fit nicely in between my two outside panels. Then last but not least, I cut down a piece of quarter inch oak veneered ply. This will make up my back panel of the entire cabinet. Again, we had to use oak because you will see this through those glass doors. Then after getting all my rough cabinet pieces cut, I next needed to add a groove to the back side of most of the pieces that will allow that back panel of oak plywood to sit into. Now I understand all this might be very confusing right now, but it'll make much more sense once we start putting this thing together. So I add that groove to one of my brace pieces, my shelf, and my two side panels. This will allow me to lock in that back panel on four sides. Next, I needed to figure out where exactly I need that internal shelf divider to land so that I can cut the dados on my two side panels. 
After taking the measurements off of my existing face frame, I draw a line onto my two side panels, which at this point I had clamped nice and secure to my workbench. Then I grabbed my Festool router and track system with a three quarter inch bit and zip zap zoop. I hogged out a nice three quarter inch dado across both panels. This will be the perfect place to lock in that internal white oak shelf. Speaking of which, I just went and grabbed it just to make sure it was a nice snug fit, which I'm happy to report it was. Now that internal shelf is gonna be held in place with a dado. I do this because it gives it extra support since stuff will be set on top of it. But everything else is just gonna be hooked together with pocket holes because this is a cabinet and pocket holes were designed for this purpose. So I take all my brace support pieces and I start drilling out a zillion pocket holes. Once that was done, it was finally time to start hooking this entire cabinet box together. So I added a little glue to my dado slot and I slid in that middle divider, making sure that the groove was on the proper side to line up so that I'd have a place to slide my back panel. Tap, tap, tap with the hammer to get it nice and seated. I'm not even gonna put any nails or screw in this. It was such a good tight fit that glue should be all we need. I did throw on some of these woodpeckers corner 90 degree clamping call thingamabobs so that everything would stay somewhat square as I got this glued up. And then I had to hook on this top piece. Now this can be a little tricky when you're working by yourself. So in an ideal world, you'd have somebody else in the shop to help you. Unfortunately, I'm usually in the shop alone and there was nobody around to help as I struggled getting this piece on all by myself. But I took my time, went slow, and I managed to get it in place in the end. Now at this point, the cabinet's gonna look wonky as all get out because there's only that one shelf supporting the entire thing. But don't worry, just screw some of these square things on there to get it started, and then we'll start plopping in the bracing. First, I just took some on this long side because it's the side that needs the support right now before that glue dries. But I'm not gonna screw these in place yet. We still have to put that back panel in. Next, I go to the bottom of the cabinet and I can get these all seated and installed. So I hook a few clamps to hold them in place and then I grab a drill and I start screwing some screws. Screwing, screwing in some, drive, driving in some screws into those pocket holes. Then before we add our braces on the other side, we need to slide in that back panel into that pre-cut groove. So I take some measurements to figure out how long it needs to be, and I slice it down to the right size with the track saw. Then I just have to take it over and slide it in. Unfortunately, I kind of messed up on the filming of this, so I missed the actual sliding in process, but you get the picture. Slide it in, tap it with a hammer, make sure it's seated in that groove the way it should be, and then lock it in place with that one brace piece that we cut a groove into. Then all we gotta do is add all of our supporting bracing to really hook this whole cabinet together and make sure that everything is nice and square. And in no time, it's, well, starting to look like a cabinet carcass. I wish I could say this was the hard part, but unfortunately, there's hard things yet to come. Like more curves. Why has it always got to be more curves? With my carcass entirely assembled, well, the main hub of it entirely assembled, we're not done yet. I lifted it off the table and I stood it upright. Next, I wanted to grab my face frame and just double check and make sure all my measurements were decent and that the face frame was gonna somewhat fit over the carcass the way it should. And what do you know? It's looking pretty good, but we can do better. Oh my goodness. Well, attaching it. That's one thing we'll have to get to eventually. Now, if you take a look at the cabinet now, it's still got birch on the sides. It does have oak on the back and the bottom, and the top is just this wide open void. I wanted to make it curved on the inside so that the inside matched the outside. That sounds difficult, but let's give it, oh gosh, we definitely need to fix that. Anyways, 
let's start working on that curve on the inside. So it was back over to the table saw and I started ripping down some pieces of birch ply. I know, you thought I was going to say oak ply, but before we can wrap the inside with oak ply, we've got to use a little more birch to build kind of a support system for our curved piece of oak to land on. So I took some measurements off the face frame, got out my rockler circle cutting jig, and I needed to cut some brace pieces that were small enough that I could add a 3 quarter inch piece of curved oak ply on the inside and still have it sit just behind the face frame. So, after doing the math to figure all that out, I locked my rockler jig in place and using a spiral upcut bit on the router, started cutting a circular profile. Now normally, when you cut out a circle, the circle's the thing that you want to keep. But we're kind of doing the opposite here. We're going to get rid of that circle and we're going to keep the anti-circle. The lack of circle the the other piece after cutting almost all the way through with the spiral up cut bit i switched for a flush cutting trim bit and i finished it off i now had a perfect anti-circular plywood shape that should be a nice brace piece to glue inside of my cabinet and if all my measurements were correct and I didn't mess anything up, this should slide right inside of our carcass and be a nice snug fit. Hey, what do you know? Next I clamped it in place and I set my face frame back over the top just to make sure I was going to have enough room on the inside to then add another 3 quarter inch piece of oak plywood. All my measurements seemed to be correct, so I took that brace piece out and then used it as a template and then got the flush trim bit and the router and I cut another piece that was the identical shape as my first piece. I now had two brace piece things. This way I could glue one on the top towards the front and one in the back. So I just slapped some glue on there, popped some clamps on, and added a few screws from the top of the cabinet. Then I did the same thing for the bottom. I just smeared some glue all over the bottom and I'm just realizing how weird of a sentence that was. And I slid my second little brace anti-circle piece in place and hooked it in with a few screws from the top. You really didn't need any clamps on that lower part because it was quite a snug fit. Next, I needed to get some measurements of that internal curve and a tape measure was just kind of a pain to hold in place. So I cut a nice thin strip of eighth inch poplar and I clamped that in place and then I marked on each side how far I wanted that curve to come around. I then cut that little poplar piece down to size and waved it at you guys, then used it kind of as a story stick on a pre-cut piece of oak ply to mark where I needed to stop and end my kerf cuts. Oh yeah, I should mention that that's how we're going to make this whole piece of 3 quarter inch oak bend, by doing what is called kerfing one side of it. This basically means just cutting it a zillion times with a track saw or a skill saw or a miter saw or a table saw until the piece bends. Now I will say we're not cutting all the way through it, we're just cutting almost all the way through, leaving about an eighth of an inch of material on the other side. I'm sure there's some rhyme or rhythm to how far apart you need to space your curve cuts in order to get it to bend a certain radius, but I don't know any of that. So I just cut it a bunch of times in a pattern that I thought looked like it would be enough for it to bend. I might have made too many cuts, but better too many than not enough, I always say. I cut as far as I could with the track saw in one direction, then I flipped around the track onto the other side, and I completed my pattern until I got to my pre-marked pencil lines. Then, hopefully, this thing will now bend. Let's see. Uh, hey, it's looking good so far. But the real test will be whether or not it bends enough to fit inside of our cabinet box. I think it just might. Here goes nothing. I was a little nervous, thinking at any moment this whole thing might just snap in half. But, phew, 
It slid in place without too much trouble and it was obvious that it would bend to my support pieces with really no effort. Probably put too many curves in there. But when you do a good job, regardless, you get a treat. And Craig brought me a muffin. And he, well, even showed me how I was supposed to eat it. I guess first you take the paper off, then you cheers it, and then you eat the, eat the paper? This video is sponsored by Policy Genius. Now, you've heard me talk about Policy Genius a lot, and honestly, it's because it's something that I really think is important. As we get older, we have to start thinking about what it's gonna look like when we're not here anymore. And is our family gonna be taken care of? Have they been provided for? Have you even given that any thought? That's why life insurance is such an important thing. And here's something else about life insurance. The older you get, the more expensive it typically gets. So the best thing you can do is get life insurance now while you're younger before you have to get it. So where do you even start? Where do you look for life insurance? Thankfully, Policy Genius makes this so incredibly easy. And I'm gonna show you how right now. With Policy Genius, in minutes you can work out how much life insurance coverage you need and compare personalized quotes to find your best price. You could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. Their licensed experts will help you understand your options and ensure you apply for the right policy. Policy Genius works for you, not the insurance company, so you can trust them to offer unbiased advice and help you navigate every step of the shopping and buying process. When you're ready to apply, the Policy Genius team will handle the paperwork and scheduling for free. Yeah, yeah, so all that is well and good, a lot of great information, but you're still probably asking, where do I sign up? How do I get there? What do I do? Well, that part is just even more easy. So just do what I'm gonna tell you right now and just do this. It's simple. To start comparing quotes and simplify insurance buying, just check out policygenius.com slash bourbonmoth. Policy Genius, when it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. Now you'll notice that our curved piece of white oak ply doesn't go all the way down on the sides. This is because we would have needed a piece of ply longer than eight feet, which I didn't have. So I decided to intentionally stop it towards the top and hide that seam with just a permanent shelf. I mean, there was gonna be shelves in this anyways, might as well use them to our advantage. So after cutting our curved piece down to a uniform size, I went over to the table saw and I cut some more white oak plywood down, creating a nice shelf to stick between that curved piece on the top and our side panels. I tapped that in place, making sure it was a nice snug fit, and then I measured for our two side panels. Now you wanna make sure when you're cutting these side panels that they're a really nice tight fit because they're also gonna push that curved piece tight against the form at the top. So you don't want there to be any slop in there. I did have to use a hammer to tap them in place, but that's good. You want them tight. After getting one in, I slid the other in, and now the entire inside of our cabinet is completely skinned with white oak ply, just the way that it should be. So with all my pieces in place, I grabbed my face frame and I plopped it on there to see how it looked. Regardless of how the face frame looks, this looks pretty sweet. Too bad it's gonna be completely covered up and no one's ever gonna see it. As you can see, we've got our curved white oak top now and our shelf, but the shelf has one issue. You can still see some exposed plywood, which would be visible through the glass doors. So the quick and easy solution for this was just to take a little white oak edge banding tape and, well, just cover up that exposed plywood as if it was never there at all. So I cut a strip of edge banding to size, grabbed my wife's iron from inside the house. Don't worry, I tiptoed and she never even saw me do it. Glued on my edge banding, trimmed off the excess, and sanded it smooth. Now it just looks like a piece of white oak. No one has to know it's plywood. And finally, it was time to glue all of these internal pieces in place. Now, you really don't need a ton of glue for this. Everything is wedged in nice and tight, and, well, the force from all the pieces keeps that topped curve piece in place pretty darn well. 
but we still want to add a little glue just so it doesn't rattle around or move as people bump the cabinet. So I added a little glue onto the edge of both of those support pieces, slid in my shelf. This I didn't put any glue on, I just slid it in there. And then I grabbed my two side panels. These I am going to glue firmly in place and those being in place will basically lock all of the other pieces in so they can't go nowhere. They will be there forever. And this gives you a really good view to see that once that shelf's in, you'll never be able to tell that there was a seam from that topped curved piece to those bottom side pieces. It's like magic. It's almost like I planned it that way, which I did about five minutes before this. Next, I took a couple pieces of scrap plywood and I just wedged them in the cabinet box to put some pressure on the bottom of those side panels, then added a few clamps on the top and stood back and waited for the glue to dry. In about 20 minutes or so, I took the clamps off and I stood the thing back up. And it was looking mighty wobbly. Don't worry, once we put the face frame on, this thing will be rock solid. But before we get to adding the face frame, there's just a few more things we gotta take care of first. For one, there needs to be a second shelf in here. Now I could have locked the second shelf permanently in place like the other one, but I thought it might be nice to have a little adjustability in the height of one of the shelves, depending on what you wanna store in the cabinet. So I used my little rockler shelf pin jig and just drilled three simple holes that would give a little adjustment up and down. Then I cut another piece of oak ply and edge banded the front so that it would match the one up above. And things were looking fresh and clean. Next, I decided that before I put the face frame on, since the inside of the cabinet was going to be finished and the outside was going to be painted, I might as well go ahead and finish it now, because I thought it would be much easier to do it now with the face frame off than trying to do it after the face frame was on and overhanging all those pieces of plywood. So I just slowly started rubbing some Rubio Monocoat over the entire inside of the cabinet. Once I had the entire inside finished and looking, man, I've said fresh and clean too many times already in this video, but what the hey, it looked fresh and clean. Anyways, once that was done, I added some glue to the front of my plywood box and I set the face frame in place. Now because the whole outside is gonna be painted, we can get away with just tacking the face frame down and filling our holes after the fact. As you can see, I left the face frame overhanging my cabinet box a quarter of an inch on each side. And you might be saying, why? Why didn't you just make it flush? Well, on one side, it's gonna be against a wall, so the overhang will give me some room to scribe the face frame if I need to. And on the other side, well, I left that a quarter of an inch overhang because we're gonna make it look really pretty here in a second, as soon as I can escape from this prison. With the face frame securely in place, I wanted to add some decorative casing to this one side. As I mentioned, the other side will be against a wall, so you will never see it, but you will see this side, and I wanted it to be a bit fancier. So I went over to the table saw and I started ripping down some pieces of three quarter inch poplar just right down the middle, giving me two almost quarter inch pieces, but not quite quarter inch pieces. But then I took them over to the planer. Hey, how's it going? And I planed them down to exactly quarter of an inch. Well, not exactly. They're actually just under a quarter of an inch. I'll explain that here in a second too and we're going to case this one side and just take it up a notch. As you can see here, it's just under a quarter of an inch, so there's still a little bit of a lip from the face frame. And that's what we want. It'll be much easier to come back with a flush cutting bit on the router and get that perfect than try and, you know, just line it up perfect to begin with. So with our two side casing pieces cut, I add a little bit of glue, I smoosh them into place, and then I'm just gonna tack them down with a 23 gauge pin nailer. This is a small enough gauge that the holes are pretty darn hard to see, so you don't have to worry about marring up your piece too bad. 
and they're also very easy to fill and once you paint it well you're not gonna see them at all so I glue one side down and then I glue and tack the other side then basically you just want to add cross pieces to match the pivotal points on the front of the cabinet for example the toe kick area the upper portion towards the crown and then I always go for the middle divider if there's a separation between cabinet doors and drawers. I mean, you can really case the side of it however you want. You could do one big box, a bunch of little boxes, you could do little strips, you could do shiplap, I mean, whatever you want. Or you could do nothing and just leave it plywood and paint a nice flat piece of plywood. I'm not saying this is the right way to do it, I'm just saying this is how I did it. And it doesn't look too bad. Then as I mentioned with the 23 gauge pin nails, I just go back and fill them with a little wood filler before I sand the whole thing down. Some people don't even fill these. Lots of times paint will just fill in those little holes, but why take the chance? And then before I start sanding, I take that flush trim bit and I hit that edge from the face frame to our wraparound to make it nice and flush and fresh and clean. And then I sand the entire thing down because I freaking love to sand. Now wherever you have seams like this, like from the face frame to the side, I like to use this Mohawk uh, epoxy putty stick thingamabob. It comes in a bunch of different colors, but when you're painting it white, you might as well use white. Basically it's a two-part dealio. You just cut off a little piece that you need, mix the two parts together, that activates it, and this will dry rock hard. I mean, rock hard like it'll literally turn into a rock if you leave it sitting around so be careful and you just smush that into all your little cracks and crevices then once you sand it down you will make that transition completely disappear especially after it's painted I also use the same stuff to fill all the nail holes on the front of the cabinet and I sand that down thoroughly as well and with that our cabinet carcass is looking, let's all say it together, great. You thought I was going to say fresh and clean. Well, I don't like to be that predictable. Speaking of not being predictable, I then started mounting my undermount drawer slides. Um, well, I guess that is pretty predictable because I use these on literally any project with drawers. I'm not going to walk you through the entire step by step of how I did this because as you probably know I did an entire video just on building drawers and mounting them. But basically they come with brackets, I put them at the back, I add the little wood to the front and I screwed them on there as well. And then all you really got to do is take measurements directly off your drawer slides to build your drawer boxes. So. Believe it or not, I took measurements directly off my drawer slides and I, well, went over and started building some drawer boxes. For these drawer boxes, I went super simple and quick. I just made them out of some half inch Baltic birch. I cut it down to the right width. I added a groove on the bottom for the bottom panel of my drawer box. I cut them all down to size. Then I went back over to the table saw. I cut my bottom panels down to the correct size. And then all I had to do was take all of my pieces and hook them together into a nice looking drawer box. Well, as nice as Baltic birch drawer boxes can look. But I think they look pretty nice. And they're easy. Did I mention that? Then I attached the corresponding undermount clips or the orange doohickeys and I inserted my drawers. Boom, installed. Next, all we needed to do was install our drawer faces and our cabinet doors and this thing would be done. Now inset drawer faces can be a little tricky to install. So my favorite way to install inset drawer faces is to first mark out and pre-drill for my cabinet hardware. How does this help me actually install the drawer face? Well, don't you worry, I will show you. So I just quickly mark and drill with this true position cabinet hardware jig. I will leave a link for you in the video description. It's awesome. Then I use some playing cards to space out my drawer face correctly inside of my face frame. And then using those pre-drilled holes for my hardware, I just send in a few screws right into the drawer box. It's really 
not complicated. With my screws through those pre-drilled holes, then all I gotta do is take my cards out and pull the drawer out and screw it in. What the heck are we looking at? Ain't nobody need to see that. I'm not talking about those kind of drawers. Anyways, after screwing the drawer face to the drawer box from the inside, I can remove those screws and hook on my hardware. This is literally the easiest way to install inset drawer faces. So, just do it this way. I mean, most drawer faces have hardware, so it's pretty simple. Next, we needed to install our cabinet doors. But because these are gonna be inset and our plywood sits back away from the face frame, I added these little blocks to bring them out flush with the face frame and just make installing our hinges that much easier. So I just took some white oak, I finished it with that same mud light color, screwed them on, and set my cabinet doors inside my cabinet box. Spaced it out again with a few playing cards, make sure it was nice and even, and then stuck my fat head inside the cabinet and screwed the hinges in place. And if done correctly, the door should now, ah, open and close, just like I planned it. Then you just gotta do the exact same thing to the other door and install your door hardware. And with that, our cabinet is completely put together. Now I'm gonna be hiring out the painting for this cabinet and unfortunately it's not quite ready to go into its final resting place. So I'm not gonna be able to show you the actual installation process. But if you're signed up over on my Patreon page, I will be sure to post updates over there once I get it done. You also get a lot of good behind the scenes footage like this one time I left my camera rolling and Craig decided to dance a little bit. <laughs> you guys thought that was magic, huh? I was just behind there, I was, I was pushing him. So, no magic, but magic's real. Anyways, hope you enjoyed that video. Hope you learned something. This was a doozy, I'm not gonna lie. A cabinet like this without the arch and the curve would have taken me maybe two days to build, but this thing took me about two weeks, all because I started getting fancy with those curves. But it was a lot of fun to figure out, do the inside, do the outside. Hopefully you got something out of that. Check out the links in the video description. Also, if you're not signed up on Patreon, go over there. It's a good way to just learn a lot more behind the scenes footage, and it really helps support my channel and allows me to keep making videos for you guys. So if you watch my videos and you like them, do me a favor, go sign up on Patreon. You can sign up for as little as $5 a month and get all sorts of perks. So go check that out. Now we gotta get this thing painted. That's gonna suck.